Killing Board Public Meeting for June 21st, 2022 is called the Motor Police Management Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chairman. Robert Carnahan? Here. John Foreman? Present. Julie Rivera? Here. Ross Miller? Present. Yeah. Randy Niemeyer? Present. Colleen Achievement? Here. Richard yeah. Sharp? Here. I am present. Chris Valletta? Present. Dave Gopshin? Present. <laughs> Thank you. Under all business, our first item is the CLBD South Lakeview Water Utility Infrastructure Agreement. David, could you? Uh, at long last, I've reported month after month after month, truthfully and with diligence that we were negotiating. Well, in the process of negotiating the agreement of the town for the water extension that was requested, which was a water main extension reimbursement agreement, um, we discovered collectively that the law had changed. And the law changing uh, made a tremendous impact on what our Indianapolis utility consultants and, and council thought about uh, how we should approach this and what not moving or veering from the heretofore traditional path of reimbursement which was basically establishing what the cost was for the oversized infrastructure that was required by the town to be installed for the benefit of the future utility extension and then establishing what the benefited area was uh, and calculating against that what the cost of the, uh, the, or the return would be to the developer for them constructing and paying for those improvements. And it became uh, significantly greater. If Randy had a voice, I'd let him explain it because he just loves explaining the illogic and idiocy of this. And most developers still don't know it even exists. We have to educate developers on this. It's great. Well, fortunately, calculating the way we have calculated, negotiating the way we've calculated, everybody's agreed on the cost of the oversized value. And that number is a number that we could then identify for purposes of entering a special contract and making a lump payment versus some other form of variable type payment. So the developer was in agreement with that and had no issues with converting this to a special contract. But I'm going through all this because what we started with one year ago is not what you're seeing tonight. So if this agreement is acceptable to you, you will be agreeing that the infrastructure already in the ground, this is complete, it's done that this payment will satisfy all obligations for oversizing and will constitute the town's reimbursement for a payment consistent with the statute but not exceeding the statute. Not paying three times a monthly rate for a period of time, not uh, being bound by law to additional expenses and costs. In fact, if this agreement is accepted, uh, we do not have any further costs down the path. We have developers developing, utilizing the infrastructure as it exists and on the design that is in place. So, uh, for example, the next parcel coming into the town might be the press farm. And if it does, and I think there's an application on file now, uh, that development will develop on the specifications that are in the ground. They're in place. The sizing has already been calculated. The uh, infrastructure requirement is already designed and built. And there is no need to do anything more than follow that path. The developer next will be required to do that or will not have a development. So, so it, uh, the cost to us is going to be $260,000? Yes, sir. And have they agreed to that? Well, as you heard me say before, not only have they agreed to it, they negotiated down to it. We started about, and, and by the way, I don't mean to ignore you. Neil yeah, played, you know. played, okay, I did. Played a role that uh, 
evaluated the numbers as we were talking about costs and, and values. And Neil checked off, and the last report was an excellent report about that. We have uh, we have a tremendous benefit considering it doesn't feel good to be doing something we haven't done before, but we only do it once. It's done, and we've set in place on the west side of our uh, utility infrastructure our plant uh, the system we want and need for future growth. Thank you, David. So, anybody else have any comments on this particular item? So, sir, right here. Do we have a motion to? A, no. What do we need to do? We need to approve this, right? Approve, approve this agreement or consider this agreement at least and debate it. Do we have a motion for that? <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Randy. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Colleen. And that'll that'll be for two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Two hundred and sixty thousand, correct. Uh roll call please. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Chart. Yes. Motion carries seven zero. <coughs> Thank you, everybody. Rick. Yes. May I request your consideration of uh Approving the payment processing for the $260,000 to the developer consistent with the agreement you just approved, such that we can expedite now that part of this. The developer put everything in the ground. He's got everything ready to go. He needs to have the ordinance, and, and I'm not advocating on behalf of him, I'm just talking about what's in the ground and what we permitted sure. to happen. It's all happened. Ask your consideration on payment. Where would that money come from, Jen? So original discussion was to pay for out of the system development, the previous system development, not the new system development. Um, but as with discussion, it's a possibility we could use the um, water capital or water improvement. You know, I'll confirm what to do. And you're in discussion with Sue? Yeah, okay. just because we have so many water capital items right now. I understand. And we could possibly use the Strack and Van Til money? I think that's what you use. The answer is yes to all of that. Yes. What we're going to need to do, and this isn't a pin down on it, because getting it, getting it on Sue's letterhead and all that's important. We need to spend the money that is outside the rate petition and proceeding in Indianapolis. We cannot spend, because we, we pro forma it so closely, what our need was for system development charge rate increase, that we're being held to that fire. But this is money that, uh, and we have the funds, 161,000 of it is what we just talked about, Bob, or we'll talk about here in a second, yeah. in transfer. Uh, in addition, but we didn't bring this to you, and I'm not asking you because we don't have the funds. We have funds. It's a question of how Jennifer and Sue are going to move it between accounts to finalize the ultimate liquidated number. Okay, Bob. Yes. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Jim. So, what mechanism are you looking to fire off here? Proof of payment to the proof of payment for the developer. How? What's the how? How to do it? How does the payment get made? To be the authorizing director, clerk, treasurer to <laughs> at the end of the meeting, we do the track thing. We could use that. We don't. Well, that will no. cover the whole thing. So that will cover every no. part of it, and then her. I'm sorry, Randy. Maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding. We have had confirmation that we have funds in the bank for this. So, I'm not sure where the case comes from. But if we approve the agreement, does it stay in the agreement we're going to pay them? It does. I'm trying to expedite the process here and not perhaps have a state board of accounts claim process or something similar. Again, to expedite it. Okay. That's why I ask. You, you don't need to. If you're not comfortable, please don't. I'm just confused as to why we were taking redundant action. Well, so that there are no issues from an audit perspective. Okay. Period. Do we have a motion to 
approved a $260,000 payment to CLBD South Lake Lake Water Utility. I think we already have a motion. No, we don't. This is a different. Okay. This is now. This is just payment. This is just gotcha. So this, this is, is add on to the. This is the house. This is like a 1A. Gotcha. Agenda item. So $260,000. That's what we're approving. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve making the payment. Sorry. Motion by Colleen. I'll second. Second by Julie. Roll call, please, Jim. Robert Cardigan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Randy Ewer? Yes. Colleen Stevens? Yes. Rock Miller? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, Rick, one last item. Yes. Right. Sorry, Randy. You're telling me, Dave. You'll get over it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the developer here has been tremendous to work with. This was very grinding and very, very detailed and sophisticated. And uh, he and his consultants, engineers, attorneys have been tremendous to work with. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we see more developments with professionals like this coming in and working with us. You know, I must say though, we need to learn from this and not, when this gentleman started up, I got a phone call, he was ready to walk. This, we should encourage businesses to come here and we should encourage them to build. We can't be nitpicking them on things that aren't important in any of anyone's business at the time when they first start doing this sort of thing. I mean, I, this, this almost didn't happen. We were dragging our feet, going through the process of the planning and everything very slowly, way too methodical in my opinion. Let's learn from this because we have more of this that could happen down that south corridor of US 41. It's just a matter of time. And if we don't, again, the opportunity of a lifetime is a lifetime of the opportunity. And with this county doing whatever it's doing, that may not have happened. I but part, of, part of it was that the law changed no, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about internal things yeah. here that were nitpicked to death in the beginning days that were ridiculous. That's all I'm talking about. All I can say is that we're the we policy got makers. Yes. And if we don't like our policies or how they're interpreted, we need to make new ones. Can't so agree with you. We can't complain about our staff. I'm just happy they stuck it out. Executing policies we have on the book. If our policies are junk, let's replace them. That's all. Right. That's my two cents. I think I'm happy that they stuck it out, and that's going to be a great place awesome. for businesses to move from Illinois. And that's what it's going to be. Let's move to there. Where they can sell lots. As soon as these documents are signed, they're selling lots. They're, right. they're closing a lot. It's going to be good. They're closing. It's going to be good. We move to new business. Approval of minutes from May 17, 2022. Motion to accept and waive the reading of these minutes. So moved. Motion by Randy. Second. Second by John. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Mr. Miller has stepped out. Richard Chart? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. List station 8. Uh, design and proposal for the amount of 153,897.63 for an overhaul of the system. Chris? So, this uh, list station, and thank you, Tim, for dealing with this, uh, was struck by lightning. Um, everything in it was virtually destroyed as far as electrical components. Um, this, so this is Lust Station 8 over by Corky's. Uh, this was an emergency pur purchase that's already been made because we absolutely need to get it back up and running and lead time on parts is significant. I think, what, four months is what we're looking at? We've had uh, 69 days for the pumps. Um, so this is to replace everything that's in there and to upgrade it a bit. So we're not doing an exact replace because there were upgrades we we're planning for. So lucky for us, Lightning struck it. We've already put in a claim to our insurance for the cost to replace what was existing. And instead of just replacing what was existing, we decided to do the upgrades too. So sure. might as well start fresh with brand new list station. Have our uh, insurance premium charging agents uh, been responsive to this? Are we going to get this claim process? I believe so. The next um, quote from all services was to do a forensic analysis of the electrical there, I believe. And so have to stay on. To prove that it was a... a it, we don't have a case. The insurance did send out an investigative guy to come out and check it too. We met him out there and went over everything and showed him the situation. So. They were they they were very responsive on sending 
you know, accepting the claim and sending the guy out to inspect the damages. So it's usually they're quick to pay injury claims, but very slow on everything else. Yeah. They've been, I mean, they sent the guy out, I mean, within within the week to evaluate what happened and to, you know, look at our, we had a, our own electrician do a report and pictures and evaluate also, so we had that for the records and then Good. they sent out insurance. Sent do out we have out. any idea on what insurance, what portion of this will be covered? So we're, I believe Tim's getting a quote for what was just to replace. Is this since the quote in front of you is to replace with upgrade. So we're getting that replace only quote, so that way we can submit we it. Yeah, actually, so we pulled the pumps and we got those in the shop getting quoted and rebuilt, and the equipment that was destroyed, we're actually getting an exact replacement quote for that because this 153 is new drives instead of starters and better pumps. We had this, we had the quote ready to go for the. 153 because this was in our immediate plan to upgrade with Birchwood and um, the <coughs> Brook and I mean this is turning into really fast at our number three third biggest lift station actually just because of all the development that's happening on that side of town. So we had we had that those numbers available. Um, so we already kind of had a game plan for this. So um, it'll we'll, we'll know shortly what that what those numbers actually are okay. for the replacement cost. So we should have that for you soon. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, Randy. But stay on top of it, like Randy said, because sometimes insurance claims get lost. Do we have a motion for approval for lift station 8? I'll make the motion for approval for lift station 8. I'll motion. second. Motion by Colleen, second by Julie. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Colleen Yes. Colleen Stevens? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Truck? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. We move on to the all services quote of $25,600. Chris? Uh, as explained, this was just uh, to do the forensic electric for it. And, uh, this is actually the new this electric service. Place. This is actually okay. the new electric service that's needed to tower the lift station. That All that, the cabinet and the service and everything is completely melted. So this is, there's all kinds of pictures in here. This is actually part of the. Reconstruction. Will some of this be included in the insurance claim also? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And this is one of those numbers we were awaiting for that insurance claim, so the other ones are shortly coming. Okay. If you go to tab four on your iPad, you can see the pictures of the, the list station equipment that's been destroyed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Looks like unsafe building pictures, actually. <laughs> We'll get the process started and uh, hopefully oh, the town's responsive. Oh, sure. Violation. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thanks, Chris. We have a motion to approve the all services. I'll make quote. a motion to approve the all services quote. Motion by Colleen. I'll second it. Second by Ralph. Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julie Rivera? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Colleen Cuban? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Charles? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. We move to the written report, fund report, our clerk treasurer, Jennifer. Um, fund reports were sent out to you all via email uh, yesterday evening. I apologize for the late hour, but I was out of town at conference last week. So on Monday, we were hectic, um, continuing to work on our many projects. And yeah, that's all I got for you right now, unless you have any questions for me. Any questions for Jennifer? Seeing none, move on to our engineer report from Lease Engineering, Mr. Neal. Thank you, Mr. President. For the um, Utopia East Side Water Main and the Elevated Tower, all the contract documents are complete. Shop drawings and schedules are being prepared and submitted, and we're coordinating with town staff on those items. For uh, West Side Sanitary Sewer Interceptor Update, the CSX coordination and material acquisition is proceeding subsequent to our approval of their shop drawings for project one. Uh, project two, the update is uh, the proceeding of the design and we're coordinating with Dave's office in terms of residence and acquisition of the easements that we have submitted. The uh, item three, east side sanitary sewer update, that uh, staff level is proceeding with that and they're, they're doing a great job. Um, I, I know Tim had mentioned last month that they had done some additional work at List Station 2 and bypass pumping, and they're proceeding with that um, for the in situ form 
and the uh, manhole lining for that. The SSES, we've had incredible dry weather metering. We're, um, we're in a good shape on that for baseline and we're looking for in a good way and bad way wet weather data that we haven't seen in the past three months just due to the weather we've had. So uh, Tony and Kyle and his guys are collecting that data and um, once we get that wet weather they'll submit everything on our FTP site so we can analyze that, review it, and then coordinate that with the uh, videos that they've provided over the past six to eight months. I have a couple questions. Yes. Uh, the water line going from the lighthouse to Lakeside and Robin's Nest, uh, what's the timetable? We haven't started yet, right? We haven't started yet. Um, just this past uh, week and a half, two weeks, we received all the um, certificates of insurance and the bonds from the contractor. We had uh, Rick sign those and Jenna test those, those contracts. They've been submitted back to the contractor and we've already approved their shop drawings back in March and now that they have the documents, they're securing materials and they'll be submitting um, a schedule of construction subsequent to that. And that will coordinate that, not only with that project, but with what uh, Lakeside 2 and Lakeside South is doing with their water main extension to connect to this and the improvements that are actually being con um, worked on this week at uh, the Lighthouse facility from Ortman doing airburst and overboard tests on those wells for the improvements that will go along with this. Was that a part of the hoses being on the side of Morris? No, that, that was from the east side interceptor, the bypass pumping oh, that's right. uh, for the manhole lining. Lining the, lining the manholes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then in the, the sewer lining as well. And then the water tower uh, yes. over in Crystal Oak. Yeah, that um, again is the initial update was all the con contract documents are in place. We're coordinating with um, the contract with Caldwell Tanks and uh, Dixon Engineering for review of the shop drawings which are uh, impending and then once those are all approved, Dixon will go down, inspect everything that's being uh, fabricated so that when it comes up here uh, later this summer into the fall that uh, everything's consistent with the plans as required. Awesome. Just in case anyone gets any emails from how couple tank, don't open them. They've been getting a fish fishing cam, so um, I click on every lake just to see what it'll take me. Beautiful. Yeah. Do that in your county more often. Than <laughs> here. They almost always have misspelled words, everybody. For fishing scams. Yeah, and always Chris, do. Chris makes a good point. Uh, and Randy, when you do open those, what, what was the last four digits of your social media? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say it right now? For the record, please. Oh, so, we already got it. We already got it. <laughs> no, and, and that, that's a good point because you, you see that in, you know, Jen with ACH. We're open. We oh, don't have um, but they're being proactive and making sure the town doesn't have any issues on uh, the SRF funding and those things. So, thank you. Thank you, Neil. Any other questions for Neil? Th there is one more update. Yeah, um, what was sorry. mentioned before, and, and John had talked about, and David mentioned, is we've, we've made some very minor updates to our development standards consistent with a, a staff review, um, looking at what's our best practices going forward for today, tomorrow, the next 5, 10, and 20 years for the town and um, we'll make sure that those development standard updates not only get to Don is incorporated into um, the, the development standards for the planning commission but they go out to all the developers that we typically work with and then as new developments come in uh, those developers and their engineers and their staff get those updates as well. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Uh, Director of Operations, Tim. Um, and we've had a lot of things going on, as Neil said, the relining of the sewers is now south of 145th, so um, they had 145th shut down for two days, that was the end of the world for those people that were yeah. out there, uh, past there and they're in the woods and kind of on the last downhill slope there to, to uh, the station. Um, during the first day of the parish uh, rebuild project, we found the uh, six inch water main loop that we had no idea was in existence. Um, they had an inch and a quarter service line that went to the two houses on the south um, east corner of the parish in 137. Um, 
after the day out there trying to shut, figure out how to shut that water main off, we dug up probably 40 feet to the west and dug down to crimp off that line. We crimped off the line, didn't shut it off. Uh, Ryan ended up shutting the valve off across Parish that shut the water off, much to everybody's surprise. So, as we were digging up that main to crimp it off, we took a scoop to clean out next to the main and we found a six inch C900 main that comes from the west. So it comes to Parish and runs south probably 100 feet and then crosses Parish to the east and connects the loop around to uh, Winding Creek. Hence why we could never shut Utopia off because we didn't know it was feeding from the other way. And we also averted disaster by finding it that day because the second day they would have cut through that six inch main that we had no idea that was there. Wow, the storm sewer. So we ended up having to lower that water main across it with the storm sewer. Um, we got documentation and pictures and found a big piece, a big missing link of our water system, which was pretty cool at the end of the day. It couldn't have. I mean, oh, it was like a catastrophe that worked out oh, well. Yeah. That we oh. And that of, saved us money. We got a lot of good information. And, and that saved us money. Yeah, for sure. It definitely uh, saved a major deal the next day. So that was pretty good that it, I mean, it happened. Uh, we all, everybody dealt with it well, and we got it taken care of, and it oh. worked out well. So. Doesn't surprise us though. Yeah, right. We knew what we bought when we bought it. And then the you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. So. And then the uh, well pumps that we you guys approved a couple months back for Havenwood the upgrade of the well motors and the drives for those motors are in. Uh, they just got the pumps in today. Uh, Ortman, so as soon as they get done doing the air bursting, probably by the end of the week with the lighthouse, they'll be in Havenwood installing. That which will give us an additional 400 gallons a minute of production, which will be uh, something well needed here on the west side. Um, yes, that's it. And the only other thing is this morning we had a little bit of, uh, not really a little bit, but we had a lot of water drop on the water tower, probably 150,000 gallons of water. We thought there was a water main leak or a break somewhere this morning, but after driving around the whole town and investigating it was just due to the 100 degree day and all those new construction houses water and new sod in the morning at five o'clock so from five to seven o'clock um, we use about 150,000 gallons of water and it was legitimate sprinkler water we have so odd and even days we have odd and even days the new construction sod doesn't apply to the okay. odd even day real so we're going to have a talk with old top and the yeah. kind of the major subdivisions and try to split them up to, you know, everybody can't do it at 5 a.m. And it was just the perfect storm with the weather and wow. everybody turned out at the same That's time. a lot of water. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of water. So everybody, a lot of, you know, it is what it is, but we're, you know, and we're real close to getting that extra water capacity installed also, which is, a, you know, good thing. So we're heading in the right Here town residents, please start taking baths. You're using too much water. <laughs> yeah, so yep, that's all I have for today. Thank you, Rod. Uh, Thank you, Brandon. You got a shower head. I have uh, a couple of questions. Again, sorry about my voice. Sorry. Um, I was called today by representatives of Schilling. They're looking to continue their expansion project at their warehouse. Um, they were told by Mr. Kuiper to contact the councilman, so they did, because evidently there's a six inch main <clears throat> by the funeral home that's choking off the necessary water they need for some fire suppression to do their expansion. I was told that there's an eight inch main coming what, to what the funeral home. Um, yes. Okay. I was told that there's an eight inch main coming to the north end of Centennial that could be tapped into that would be sufficient for their buyer suppression. They were told that Cedar Lake just doesn't have time to do any of this. We don't have the staffing or resources. What can we do to mitigate this? Well, I think, I think that that conversation kind of went awry, but the point that Ryan was trying to make is that they're testing, they're pressure testing and filling the main and Beacon West right now that's going to connect summer winds to the south. So Ryan was trying to explain to them that there's no sense in doing this test until that main is activated because you're not, 
I mean, the water quantity is going to increase after this is done. And according to what Ryan was trying to explain to uh, Mr. Slager was that if he does the test now, it's going to be basically testing the same thing as they tested out on industrial drive. But once this main that's going through the pressure testing and, and being activated is activated and becomes online, that then that incremental, you'll, you'll be getting that test that you need. So wouldn't testing the eight inch main at the north end of Centennial be worthwhile for the water capacity for fire suppression? Right, but once this other, once this is connected to summer winds, that main is going to be fed from both directions, which is going to increase that capacity of that test. So right now they they took a test on this side, they take a test on this side. It's essentially the same thing until they're connected together, and then you're going to have water feeding from both directions, which is going to give them the numbers that they need for that test. So there is there an idea of a timeline for it's this? It's being pressure. It's it's within. It's probably in a week. It's coming up here. That it's going through <coughs> filling and and sanitizing and testing right now. So it'll be online here shortly. We don't want them to use, we don't want them to use the testing on that side and, and because then it won't pass. What's the next step once that testing is done for them to continue so they can install fire suppression? Correct. So once that line is activated, we will test that hydrant and they would provide them with the information that they're going to be needing. Instead of doing it, right now if we do it, they're going to have the same exact thing as we had on the other side because it's the same scenario. So is it realistic to say in the next Seven to ten business days. Yeah, that we should be able to have yeah. some results for them. Okay. Well, they have to pass some certain state fire marshals, state fire code. They can't take occupancy. Right. It's until, it's right. They have that, or they have to build a firewall, right. which is another construction yeah. permit and all that kind of stuff. Change of design. And that's how they got the permit or building permitted to get started right. with the firewall in place. So. So, the other question I have is about maintenance of current town-owned facilities. I understand we're probably short-staffed with people to cut grass, but I got a call from Havenwood, and, and you addressed it. It wasn't addressed great. It was, no, it was done, but it was done pretty poorly. Yeah. But we had 14-inch grass at our May I know about well facility. I know all about and. We write people tickets for that, yeah. right? So it's if we can't maintain it, then this utility board needs to know so we can yeah. support contracting to maintain. Yeah, and I don't facilities. know. I don't know what went bad on that, but in the spring, it, it didn't get. It got overlooked with the being the guys were short a guy and what was happening on. So I it, sent I sent the parks guys over there to mow it at the beginning of the spring. Um, it was brought to my attention again that it was long, and I asked, why is this not cut? And the answer from the water guys was, I thought the parks guys were cutting it now. And I'm like, well, yeah. why? Would I don't Why I don't know. Would the water utility be open to a company installing at no cost an automatic install mower? And if for the remainder of the year, it'll be a robot mower, it will always be cutting. But we'll do it in charge. <laughs> For the remainder of the year to see what we're going to John, in all seriousness, are you serious? In, in all seriousness, yes. if that's something that would be helpful to maintain right. facilities, and I won't vote on it, I think we need to consider something like that, either yeah. contracting with an agency or what John is saying. Right. Yeah. As a and, test and again, yeah, we just had. A, I mean, with this, this start of year, we had a we had a yeah. second part time guy lined up for mowing. He, his grandpa got sick or something. He couldn't come. We just hired a kid today, a second kid to mow grass. Which we've had one one nineteen year old boy in Dale to mow all the parks and all the lift stations. And it's been brutal. It's been hard. They're like, mowing ten hard. hours a day. They're so mowing and mowing. And mowing. <laughs> they're mowing on the inside of the fence as well as the outside of the fence. They're mowing on both sides. There's yeah. a lot of grass at Havenwood. Yeah. Again, yeah. we're we should have that under control by the end of tomorrow. They're they're going to be out there tomorrow mowing it as many times as it takes to get it to look at like. Got a bag. Once it gets that tall, just got to wind mow it. It looks like a hay. I mean, it's mowed, but it looks like you did a hay field mowing kind of. Bring a couple of goats. Those folks from Havenwood, we love that. Go to Roomba. And also, you have a robot that can jump a single the fencing thing. around that facility, when will that be finished? The fencing has actually been installed uh, 
just over the last couple days. Uh, the only thing lacking now is the gate in the front, but the decorative fencing is on the two sides. There's a 12 foot. Do we really need to keep the barbed wire on the other sides? Yeah, that means that's what we need. I'll tell you what, now, if you go by and look at it now, it's got the slats that curve out with the little things, and now that really camouflages the, okay. the other is against the woods, and you can't even see it anymore now that they're just finished. Yeah. I, mean, I got a really of calls on that. Yeah. Also, the mowing and the fencing. Yeah, so it looks really good with the fence. I mean, it does. Jim, if you think it's necessary for us to contract, yeah. Or to do something like like yeah. John. I, I thought John's idea was a great idea, but I kind of feel that with the rest of, I mean, I need a little bit of money to pay some part-time people for mowing. We have four mowers, and we got one guy to drive the four mowers. You know, so it's been rough on. You know, and our our part-time dollar that we pay for mowing for the summer is so low that Burger King and McDonald's and everybody is beating us by three, four bucks an hour. So. It's hard to, you know, what I mean? it's hard to get somebody to do it. And we finally got another, a young kid that's actually from your neighborhood, the Marsh boy, Nathan Marsh. You know, I mean, lives just up the road from you. He, uh, he, uh, we hired him to start mowing. So, uh, good. How much is your robot charge? Yeah. Yeah, the robot. Electricity. The what robot. Is that? Sounds electricity. What is somebody Donation of the wire. It's got a GPS tracker. What's up, you guys? <laughs> well, that's something good to look at. I mean, for a little bit more money like that, I don't want to vote. I'm just offering it. So it can't be. You can't have big crassle, right, John? No, no, it never gets to it because you're always cut. I know, but you've got to make that first cut real well, right? It's a solution to a problem, yeah. perhaps. Can, can we do something here tonight as utility board to give that a try? Like, I, I would have been paying for my money. Yeah, Are you okay with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's a great idea. Be an experiment. Hopefully it works. What it looks like in here. Hopefully it works. I know what it is for sure. I'd make a motion to amend the agenda. Yes. Um, the agenda item would be to allow for the uh, rest of the season the use of a donated robotic mowing system uh, to maintain the Havenwood well site. Maybe. For the remainder of the year. Yeah. 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 Motion by Randy. Is there a second? Uh, second. Second by Colleen. Roll call. Sorry. Robert Carnahan? Yes. 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 Yes.
so that's why I asked. Then, is, then do we need to eliminate the one on the town council? I would suggest that the utility board, this is set up for the utility board direction. And okay. Action. Mr. Sharp, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda and remove item one from the town council ordinances and resolutions, resolution number 1309, waterfront transfer, and move that to the utility board meeting agenda. Thank you, Randy. I'll second Randy's motion. Motion by Randy, second by John. Roll call. Yes. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Ferra? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. Resolution number. So that. So we moved it to the utility board now. So all we have to do is vote on it at the utility board. Is that correct, David? Motion. Yes. Okay. Uh, resolution number 1309. I'll read the resolution. Okay. Resolution 1309. A resolution of the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, Town Council, in its capacity as Town Utility Board, approving a transfer of funds and all matters related thereto. Do we have a motion to approve resolution 1309? So moved. Motion by Randy. Okay. Second. Second by Julie. Roll call, please. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Richard Chart? Yes. Motion carries 6 <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So that's all in order. Seven. 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 What did I say? Six. Six or seven zero, yes. Just like the Cubs score the other night. Yeah. Or the hockey score the other night. Okay, so that completes that. We move to public comment. Any public comment, Jennifer? Do you see any public comment? Nothing online. Nothing online. Public comment. Public comment. See none. This meeting is adjourned. Next meeting, Tuesday, July 19th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting is called to order.
Town Council Public Meeting for June 21st, 2022. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. In a moment of silence, Chief Fisher, if you would, during the moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Moment of silence for um, first off Sergeant Jose Resendez from Crompton Police Department that passed away last week at a long battle of cancer. Um, funeral services coming up on Wednesday. And if we could also remember Officer Tyler Dills, that is Officer uh, Alexis Dills' husband, who was in a pretty horrific uh, police accident um, last week. He's still in ICU in Chicago. Um, if you can remember him in your prayers. Thank you. <clears throat> my apologies for my uh, voice, but uh, I had a cold last week, and this week it left me with no voice. So um, I'll be as I'm asking the town manager to introduce the agenda items this evening on my behalf. So we'll start with a roll call. Mayor Carnahan here. John Foreman here. Present. Julia Vera here. Ralph Miller? Present. Colleen Sheehan? Here. <coughs> Richard Sharp? Here. Randy Newire? Present. I am present. Chris Lattis? Present. David Austin? Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. The presentation scheduled for tonight has been canceled pending a reworking of the program due to the uh, <coughs> nature of the marketplace with interest rates right now. We have public comment on agenda items. Joel Dixon, 8711 West 132nd Place. Under new business number five, transfer of property. Is there an address or location of said property? That'll be introduced when that item is introduced. But then we can't make a public comment then. Right, it's the transfer of property is going to be the Potawatomi Park property be transferred the proposal to the RDC. So you're transferring the title to the RDC? Yes. Thank you very much. That's what the will be. Any other public comment on agenda items? Third call. Jen, anything online? Nothing online. Thank you. Chris, if you would, with the consent agenda, please. So for the consent agenda, we have <coughs> June 7th, 2022. Minutes, claims, all town funds, $211,846.42. Wastewater operating fifty six thousand one hundred and seventy dollars and fifty cents. Water utility fifty four thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty six cents. Stormwater eleven thousand four hundred fifty dollars eighty seven cents. Payroll for six nine twenty two three three hundred and forty three thousand three hundred thirteen dollars three hundred and four or twelve dollars and eleven cents. Trying to be an auctioneer right now. <laughs> Um, and may remittances of one hundred and seventy thousand six hundred eight dollars and fifty four cents manual journal entry for May first, twenty twenty two through May thirty first, twenty twenty two donations VIPS tag day donations of nine hundred and fifty four dollars and forty six cents Douglas and Jennifer Hoffman police vest donation two hundred and fifty two hundred fifty dollars two thousand five hundred dollars their donations. For Ray and Wally's $300, Amvets Post 15 $500, Cedar Lake Lions Club $250, People's Bank $250, Sheep and Automotive $250. Is there a motion to accept and waive the reading of the minutes and accept the consent agenda as listed? Mr. President, if I could real fast, I don't believe uh, Town Manager received the updated agenda. The minutes from June 7th were actually removed from your consent agenda. <laughs> The minute they've been removed. Thank you. The record reflects. It's not so easy. I make it look easy. <laughs> 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 well, there was a department head meeting today. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda for the minutes of June 7th. Thank you. Motion by uh, Mr. Sharp. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. 
second by Mr. Foreman. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? <coughs> yes. Colleen Cheban? Yes. Richard Chart? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Chris, we'll skip item one, ordinances and resolutions, move on to BZA plan. Correct. So under uh, item number one, under BZA plan, we have ordinance number 1418, Humane Pet Store Ordinance. This <coughs> received a public hearing at the Plan Commission on June 15th. It was unanimously approved, 6 to 0. And so it's before you now for your consideration with a favorable recommendation from the Plan Commission. Julie, the Plan Commissioners were like, what the heck are we voting on? Mr. Sharp. Ordinance number 1418, an ordinance amending Cedar Lake Town Zoning Ordinance number 1402 <coughs> pertaining to regulation of pet shops in the town of Cedar Lake, repealing all ordinances and town code provisions or portions thereof in conflict herewith and all matters related to So one reading, Dave. Single reading. Thank you. You've heard the reading of Ordinance 1418. This has been vetted here at this meeting as well as the Planning Commission. Is there a motion by the Council to adopt? I'll make a motion to adopt. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Sheevan. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Miller. Questions or discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Austin. The record should also note that there were no objections or remonstrances at any level of discussion on this item in the public by our public. Thank you. Let the record show. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Kernahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Stevens? Yes. Richard Church? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. It's adopted. Chris, go ahead. Ordinance next, we have ordinance number 1389, uh, which was approved um, last July of last year. Uh, we were withholding signatures. This is the PUD agreement for uh, CLBD, uh, Lakeview Business Park PUD agreement. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sharp, by his title, please. Ordinance number 1389. <coughs> ordinance requests find certain lands in the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, for zoning purposes and amending town zone, zoning ordinance number 1402, being the zoning ordinance of the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, passed and adopted by the town council of the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, in the first, <coughs> month, first day of March 2022, and all amendments passed subsequently to. Mr. Austin. <clears throat> this actually was adopted by you as a body last year, I believe. Uh, signatures were recommended to be withheld, and you agreed with that pending the compilation of uh, finished materials, fine tuning, and uh, water uh, reimbursement or water utility infrastructure uh, <coughs> undertakings that were involved with this. So, uh, this is really before the important <coughs> basis that. All items are completed that uh, with your consideration tonight and approval of the letter of credit surety uh, based upon recommendation of your town engineering consultant Don Oliphant, this matter is uh, ready to be circulated for signatures. I've so notified uh, both Attorney Bauer on behalf of Mr. Balcoma and Mr. Balcoma just before the meeting started to proceed. So we're in ministerial time with the gathering of uh, information and the compilation of requirements. This would be a single reading as well, correct? It is a single reading. Thank you. You've heard the reading of Ordinance 1389. Is there a motion to adopt? I make a motion to adopt Ordinance Number 1389. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Sharp. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Sheevan. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Kernahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. This will be signed now. Yep. Next ahead. item letter of credit for uh, what's being called the Perez property in the amount of $4,430.25 for KNR Lakeview Two Lot Subdivision. The final plan was approved by the Planning Commission. Uh, so this is now a ministerial acceptance of the letter of credit. Well, um, I make a motion to accept the letter of credit in the amount of forty-four thirty twenty-five. Second. Motion by John. Second by Bob. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan. Yes. John Foreman. Yes. Julia Rivera. Yes. Ralph Miller. Yes. Colleen Cheban. Yes. Richard 
charge yes. it. Yes. Yes. Motion carries 7-0. Next item is another letter of credit for CLBD South, uh, Lakeview Business Park, which the PUD was just approved by you two <coughs> items ago. Uh, the amount of $207,518.19. This is a reduction from our standard 25% letter of credit because this is all but the street lights have been installed as far as infrastructure that's required the fixtures. Of credit. The fixtures. Are in. They've already been paid for by the developer, so this is a 10% letter of credit, which is still a significant amount and more than covers the remaining public infrastructure that needs to be put in. Thank Correct. You. They're waiting on NIPSCO, so yeah. we all know how that goes. So we don't want to hold up their money at the flight mission. That's what we're what after. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the letter of credit in the amount of 207 518 Second. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Foreman, second by Mr. Sharp. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. The next item is, uh, and we'll ask for a deferral on this item, but the Lake Ecosystem Restoration SDS uh, Stage 2 bid award. Uh, we're simply asking for it to be deferred so our uh, uh, financial specialist and our utilities, Sue Hayes, can continue to do um, financial analysis on our, our systems. As we talked about in the utility, um, we're pretty well buried right now. Um, so I expect this to probably be taking action probably sometime next month um, once Sue has had the time to, to do an analysis. Uh, we have 90 days for these bids, so we're still well within the time period uh, to act. Thank you. Are any of these companies no companies in the state local. of Indiana? No. None of our bidding companies were local. Okay. We have a recommendation from the town manager for deferrals or motion. I make a motion to defer. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Sharp, second by Ms. Sheevan. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Cheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Myers? Yes. Carry 7 0. <clears throat> Next item is uh, consider paving Kiwanis Park parking lot using park impact fees. Uh, I believe this item was brought before the town council already, but we, we were asked by the uh, park board to solicit two additional quotes to see if we can get a, get a better price than Milestone. We did receive a better price uh, under Olson Construction Inc. for $96,552, uh, which is uh, enough of a distance between Milestone that our recommendation and our engineer's recommendation is to go with Olson Construction in that amount. And then we also have uh, pricing for striping, uh, which is uh, the lowest bid for that is Traffic Control Specialist Inc. for $6,448.75. Thank you. Nice. We have a, a favorable recommendation from the Park Board for paving for Olson construction and for the striping, as mentioned by the town manager. Is there a motion to approve? I will make a motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Sheevan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Sharp. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Matt Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Niemeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. The next <laughs> item is uh, community uh, development block grants for Lindsway Sidewalk Project. Uh, we initially bid out this project, received no bids, where it was instructed by um, Tim Brown from the Lake County uh, that we could then solicit quotes. We got two quotes for this work. Uh, the lowest was, was H3 Concrete Inc. in the amount of $63,214.30, and our recommendation from our engineers for that uh, company to be awarded. We Big difference. Thank yeah, you. the other bid was 122,995. Okay, we have a uh, recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. To approve Lindsay's project. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Ms. Sheevan, second by Mr. Vera. Questions or discussion? Tim, where is uh, H3 Concrete Inc. out of? Chicago Park. Uh, Chicago Park. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, motion. 
I mean, uh, roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colleen Sheevan? Yes. Richard Turner? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. The these, next were, these were the same guys that did the lens wage on the CDBT, all the, oh, okay. all the stuff two years ago. They did all that. No, I'm just oh, we're getting it again. That's good. I, I just never heard of them. So. The next item is Highland uh, Subdivision Pay Request Number One in the amount of $282,001.27. Um, so pretty substantially complete, if not complete. Uh, there's probably just a few outstanding punch list items, but I've been told that it's looking really good, and now there's um, stormwater infrastructure in a place where we have not had it. <coughs> You guys get a chance, you need to drive up there and look at that. Okay. I already did. It's amazing. Thank you. That's it. There, there was wagon trails and they had curbs and blacktop houses. Well, is there a motion by the council? So moved. Thank you. Is that to approve, Bob? Yes. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Carnahan. I'll second. Second by Mr. Miller. Questions or discussion? I would just say by us doing what we've done there in South Shore, other subdivisions that were always wagon trails, that reinvestment in those little neighborhoods will come. Some may come in, in the fixing up of what's there. Most will be teardowns and rebuilds. So and I get the money well spent. I'm sorry it took so long, but we had holdups from Nipsco. Uh, oh, Comcast right. and AT and T. You've been walking your. Is that your new walk up and down that area now? No, <laughs> I drove through it yesterday. Good stuff. Any Next questions or discussion? No, sir. Yeah. Next yeah. item is accepted. Robert Carmichael. Yes. Attorney Gaddy. Yes. Robert Carmichael. Yes. Attorney Gaddy. Yes. Robert Miller. Yes. Helen Sheevan. Yes. Richard Charles? Yes. Randy Niemeyer. Motion carries 7 0. We just want to get to the fire department. Way better than the other guy. Keep going. We need to know how many millions of people have been saved. Item number four, acceptance of. million this week. We need bump those numbers. Acceptance of temporary access easement from Lake Heritage Park Foundation. This is the last easement that we finally have gotten for the SDF project. Uh, and the keys are being delivered to our um, engineering company uh, for the few gates that they have over in their property to allow for access. Awesome. Motion by the council to approve. I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Sharp. Is there a second? So moved. Second by Mr. Foreman. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Carnahan? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Ralph Miller? Yes. Colin Steven? Yes. Richard Carr? Yes. Randy Neymar? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Item 5. Chris? Item number 5, and I'm trying to. Dave, do you have that resolution number? <coughs> I don't. Chris. I'll have one. I'll have to track down that resolution number. Uh, this is for the transfer of property um, from the town proper to the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, the two specific parcels are the Pottawatomie Park parcel and the Public Works parcel. Uh, and it's for a uh, possible uh, increase in public amenities and development. Do we have a resolution in front of us for that transfer? There is a resolution. I'll get it here in a moment. No, it's probably not on there. Mr. So Short, by its title, please. We do not have a number at the moment. No number yet, Jim. Correct. Would it be 1391? No. No, 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 no. Okay. no. I don't want to get. I'd rather not pass off the top of my head. Okay, okay. Resolution to be numbered. A resolution of the town of Cedar Lake, Lake County, Indiana, town council authorizing the transfer of certain parcels of real property to the town of Cedar Lake Department of Redevelopment under the authority of and jurisdiction of the Town Redevelopment Commission, as well as execution and delivery of all documents necessary to effectuate the attended real property transfer and all matters related thereto. Thank you. You've heard the reading of resolution no number. Uh, my 
Saskatchewan's at will be 1310, but don't hold well, me to it. Let me, let me triple check. Yeah. Wait a second. 1309 was. Yeah. Well, that was today. Yeah. That was the resolution of the Town Council Utility Board. Well, there is a difference between the resolution and the ordinance. Yeah. They have a different number and came like correct. But that was a resolution. Yeah. We'll just, for now, put as a placeholder, maybe use the date, uh, 621, 2022-1 as a placeholder. And council can direct the uh, insertion of the correct next sequential number Thank you. for purposes of contingent on the clerk treasurer's assigning of Right, so the motion would need to include the uh, assigning of the correct resolution number. And the redevelopment commission will have to pass a similar resolution correct. It will. Is there a motion by the council to approve the resolution as read by Mr. Sharp? I'll make the motion to accept the resolution as read by Mr. Sharp and to sort of a Clerk treasurer, the next sequential number. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Sheba. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Rivera. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Robert Cunningham? Yes. John Foreman? Yes. Julia Rivera? Yes. Rob Clillett? Yes. Colleen Sheba? Yes. Richard Sharp? Yes. Randy Neumeyer? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, reports, Town Council, Bob. Uh, just uh, would like, uh, we were going to recognize Yancey Carpet at uh, redevelopment uh, yesterday and they didn't make it, but I did indicate to everybody there and I'll let everybody know that Lake County Solid Waste is now in the old Girl Scout building on Broadway in Miraville and Yancey's installed all the carpet there. Thanks, Bob. The other town council. I have something. Um, I've been getting a lot of calls about the ball field uh, neighborhood again. Um, first, some people are pleased with having the speed bumps. They said it's really helped with slowing down people speeding through there. I only had one call where a guy who lives there was upset that he can't speed down his street anymore. <laughs> But otherwise, you know, that's an improvement. Um, but this weekend, uh, a resident took a lot of pictures of cars parked on the side of the street that says, no parking this side of the street. Says one of his neighbors called the police, said an officer came out, parked near the cars, didn't ticket the cars, and some were out of state, uh, like Wisconsin plate, but not that that matters. Um, and that the officer moved the cones and barrels that the residents have been using to cut for years now to kind of um, save their parking spots in front of their houses. So, of course, people are upset that they called the police for one thing, and their cones and their, their barrels, which, you know, shouldn't be there, but that is their only recourse to not have people close to their house. There was a camper, I guess, parked out there overnight. Um, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. And I, I'm tired of hearing, well, people knew where they were moving or where they lived, that there were ball fields there. They didn't know it would become so big and that there would be so many um, tournaments and out-of-town tournaments and uh, that they would not be, you know, the, these things aren't staggered. Um, we don't have a, we're not given a schedule of this is when softball is, this is when baseball is. So. Um, you know, one of the suggestions is, first of all, ticketing for the sign that's already there would be a start and the bare minimum. Um, and also, a residential only parking area. Um, you know, I've seen this in other, other towns. Um, maybe Mr. Austin can explain, like, the legalities of having residential only parking signs. You control your traffic. You have local authority over that. Under home rules, you can certainly establish the guys, the controls. They need to be objective. They need to have some parameter to them or explanation to them mm -hmm. in the establishment, but that's what uh, Chief Fisher and the police department would do in my mind. Right, and you know, having more police presence out there, maybe some zips on the weekends, um, because they said, you know, in the past years there have been cars ticketed, but um, you know, why do we have the sign there if it's not gonna be enforced? 
So maybe you can answer that. Well, well, first off, to answer the question about the ticket, it's first off, it's an officer's discretion to write a citation. I can't force one to, but I did have a conversation with her out there and asked him what happened. And he said, Chief, honestly, I was I was in, intending on writing citations, but they had blocked all the roads are parking on the public street so those people had nowhere to park so I forced them to move and then I went over and said you cannot put cones on in front of your house on a public street to block it because the guy that complained to me was only complaining about out-of-state plates that's all he complained about I'm like sir you can't do that you can't block the road so I had a conversation with the town manager who was in complete agreement with me you can't block a public road where people are needing to park because the softball is having a huge tournament um, I think the problem is not it's not our fault. The problem is the communication between the softball and the local residents to allow them or let them know when these things are happening and there's no communication there. Nor is there anything from the softball tournament to um, allow for parking elsewhere and to get the people there. So these people are coming in from out of state. They don't know any, and, and it's not legal for them to park in front of that sign. And can they be ticketed? Absolutely. Uh, my officer at that time, that was his... Um, determination because they were forced to force the park there, although still illegal, because they had blocked every single spot in front of their house so they couldn't do it, which they can't do also. Well, if I'm going to an event and there's no parking in front of residents' houses, I'm not going to park where it says no parking. You, right. you, you're, sure. And you're right. You're right. right. You, you should not, have. right? It doesn't mean other people won't, right? Yeah. The speed limit says 30, but that doesn't mean everybody does 30. Now, it doesn't mean we have to write a citation every time. Our, our goal is to get it opened up, and that's what we did by getting the cars moved right away. Um, you know, a lot of times we warn for the first time, and that's an officer's discretion to decide what he wants to do with all of the information that he's given at that time. So that's why he made that determination to, to, to just get the cars moved and out of the way because they were illegally parked. And then to... to okay. Well, I, I so we don't have to write a citation unless the, the officer wants to. I've heard that the cars were parked there, though, like for... Um, What's that? I don't know if they found the owners of the car. Yeah, they made an announcement, and everybody came and moved their cars. That's what the officer told me. I wasn't aware of this until Monday morning. I wasn't even told about the incident, so... And I think the cars, uh, four out of the, I don't know, eight or how many sat there for a while. So, so the side of the street that says no parking, people parked on it. They did Because park. the side that you can't park on, people that live there, blocks. Right. Right. I mean, what if the people that live there just put their cars in front of their house? Does that give people the right to park where it says no parking? It doesn't, but it also doesn't give the right to put cones up to block people from out of state to park there on a public road. I'm not saying either one are right. I'm not. I'm agreeing with you. It is a problem, um, but you can't block the road to public access unless you as a council change that ability to the, that there's only residential parking or in our opinion when we talked about it but no parking on the entire road period you want to have the road wide open put up a sign that says no parking period and there's also you know people that have said their mailboxes have been blocked and we have expressed them that when that happens you need to call us so that we can take care of that problem when it happens they always seem to wait until three or four days later or a week later when they come to us about that we you, you see the culture service i was just looking at that happenstance we went up over 600 calls in the first six months from 2020 just in two years you know we're averaging over 34 call, almost 34 calls a day so, and some of those calls can take quite a bit of time. And when you have limited number of officers, which you guys are doing a great job and trying to increase, I'm not complaining about that, but they have other priorities and they, they do try to go through there, but they're also trying to go through Winding Creek and they're also trying to go over to Centennial for their complaints and they got to go on their calls for service. So it's not something that easy. And I don't have a VIPS program that can sit out there because they're all volunteers. They, they don't have that ability. But this is going to go on until October. So there has to be something else that can be done. Can't we write a letter? It's going to get worse. Can't because the baseball is going to actually increasing their size now, we've been told. Can't they park and rent a shuttle? That's a part of their Yeah. Job. They can work something out with the school with a lot of communities. Holy name. When right they have tournaments. When they have special yeah. tournaments. Because the issue is they're big tournaments. That's the issue. When they have normal softball, they don't have these issues because they're changing out fast enough, right? But when they have these huge tournaments, these key teams come in early so that they can warm up. I know this, Todd knows this from travel baseball, you get there early to get your kids going. Well, you have the teams that are playing, all their parents, then you have these kids coming in early, all their parents. The ones that just finished up off the field, they still haven't left. I just don't know how 
you can leave. The tournaments are keeping the program afloat. If there's not enough room, you can't have the people. I mean, the World Theater can only hold so many people. I, I'm not, I don't disagree with you, Colleen. I don't. Can't, if you can't hold it, then you can't have it. That's how I see it. They are a business. They make money. They're not, they're not not for profit. If you don't have the space, then you can't have the event. Then you are limited to what you can have. That's how I would know. What's your side? I find it ridiculous. Hey, Colleen, I'm going to ask you a question. And if perhaps the special events ordinance that we have them fill out, you know, if we decide to go that route, we make a requirement as part of filling on special events ordinance that you have to provide a parking parking plan. Okay. That's fine. Yes. And, and, and they need Here's to the yeah. And they need to provide that to all of the people who they're inviting to their tournaments as well. But I think more specifically, they need to provide us a parking plan and it not just be. And it has to be adhered to. How can we get this ball rolling? Well, we, we well, Attorney Austin's looking at a special events permit that we submitted back in I think January, but he was got some issues with it, which I respect, and he's taking he's got a few other things you guys are working on. So, um, but but I, I don't know how to resolve this. The problem is that the softball needs this to stay afloat. That's how they make their money. But there's there's not enough parking down there. The the resolution is having this huge field that you guys want to propose that's in the future, out. but that's years out. It's not necessarily if you phase it. What about the first phase can be built with a handful of fields at a minimal cost to get it started. We don't need to do the whole elephant at one time. So can I ask a question? Can we get a hold of maybe Dickie Henn? He just bought that Fritz farm. Maybe he would be willing to donate some property for parking. One of the council members had suggested that. But unless we have something in writing some yeah. sort of ingress, egress, some sort of maintenance agreement, because it's not even in town yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking about Right, that. it's not annexed. Right. We have no... So maybe Chris had something you can... The I, word donate, I we will have it. The word use it for a certain number of... Temporary use of the field. Maybe lease it. Um, I will also state that there was a petition of annexation submitted late yesterday, accepted today for, our, for that property. Oh, awesome. A suggestion was made to me by Cliff that they had, they had an issue in St. John um, that Mr. he said Mr. Austin wrote was they did a permit parking um, for the residents. So um, it was two permits per area. It was behind Lake Central. They had an issue of parking back there. Um, so this was, they, they, each resident was given two permits um, to park on the street and everybody else was cited or we'll have to find out what they did. But um, I, I don't know, there's, there's a couple of options, but you know, so we could have wrote three tickets. I can tell you that we could have wrote three tickets out there, right? That wasn't the whole problem, though. There was, there's three vehicles that were parked illegally that he got moved right away. The problem was that everything else was covered up, and I think she said she lives over there, and there was parking. There's plenty, yeah. I I live at the T. Do you leave the softball field if you don't stop? You go into my driveway. I'm sorry about that. I was coming down there. You no, know, it's fine. Just come into the garage next time. There's no cars parked in front of my house. There was no cars parked up the street. The neighbors are parking there. Now, one of the neighbors had a surprise birthday party. People from out of town came in. Of course, surprise birthday party. They weren't parking in front of the house. They were parking down the street. You do something cars not from the area i mean we're allowed to have parties and stuff we live there right but i mean there's some houses i live in on foreign there's some houses between my house and the baseball field they have three cars in the driveway and four cars on the street that are there so the street looks busy because there's cars on it it's the people who live there um there's only two people who complain about the games and stuff in our whole entire subdivision. Yeah, well, I don't know who the other well, so, the are. <laughs> I, I have both of them in my email. Let's I can send them to you. They're changing their voices. The yeah. There's so many people who are aggravated with wanting to stop the fields from doing what they're doing. We have no problems with it. There's no garbage out. They're not parking in our yards. The first year that they started it, they had a different person running it. It was their first year. It is so much smoother and to walk down and watch a game is awesome on a Saturday evening because you got nothing going on. I mean it's great. It's great hearing okay. the cheers and everything. My God, fantastic game. But and the people are very respectful. 
We've told many of them who we see leaving the softball field and look and we're like, park in front of the house, you're fine. And they're like, are you sure? I'm like, park in front of the house. We don't care. Well, yeah, yeah, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph holds when we put the speed bump up. She calls and says, well, why are we doing this? There's some may, that like it. may seem like it's a very big, big, big problem, but he said it's not. There's a few people that don't like it and they've been... They, there's a handful that for, are irritated about it. Right. There's a handful that... The cars have slowed down. We do have a lot of kids that have moved into the subdivision the last two years that ride their skateboards in the street, not on sidewalks. Well, there's not a lot of sidewalks in that subdivision, just the one block. Their bikes, they're in the streets. So it's kind of slowed cars down a little bit. But the parking and everything, it's been fine. I mean, baseball is going to be having a wrestling tournament in the next, what, week or two there. It's going to be busy again. It is what it is. But I mean, not everyone feels the way you do, though. Two, I've talked to a lot of the neighbors. I have two. There, there's only two that I know of that are very vocal about it. Um, there's a couple of the elderly that they're irritated with it, but they're inside. They don't go outside. Maybe there's an exception, not to rule. But they are right up there by the softball field. So, of course, they see the growth of it because their houses are right there. I, I have them where they for a long time didn't even stop at the stop sign. They were just almost hitting each other trying to get down the street to the field, running late. I mean, but the parking's been fine. We haven't had any issues. We didn't have issues last year. We haven't had any issues this year. So in an effort to legislate a rule instead of an exception, Dave and I worked on the special events ordinance back in 2013, I think it was, a long time ago. We did that would not limit people's abilities to have parties, right. that wouldn't create this unconstitutional situation where we're vetting everybody that comes across the gate of our town, so to speak. But that simply when you have large events, you have to, there has to be knowledge that circulates amongst our first responders. So I, I think it'd be worthwhile as a way to kind of take a holistic approach instead of legislating the exception, that you look at something like that that's simple, but that creates that little bit of a buffer that allows for a little bit of analysis to take place so that we make sure that all the right resources are in place. Is that all that stuff? Do we have a schedule that when they're going to have their tournament? They, they passed it out to the neighbors. To well, I never got a tournament. Neither did I. That's what they said here in the meeting. Yeah, that's what yeah. I remember. About. Well, they might have said it. They never gave us one. Okay. I actually looked it up online to find out when tournaments were happening because I was going to try to spend some overtime and put officers out there. I, I, I looked it up. I couldn't find it. They don't have a web page. Um, if you go to it, it says it's not available. Um, yeah, so I, I couldn't even find a schedule of tournaments for them. So. You know, and, 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 yeah, and no, the whole that's issue is the three cars that were parked on no parking. I understand that that's frustrating that they didn't get ticketed, but our goal is to get them away from there. And if the officer chooses not to write a citation, that's their choice. Um, but there's more of a problem than just those three cars, right? There's more of the problem of the people blocking. So that, and, and literally, his complaint to me, the one person that I spoke to, his complaint was out of state plates only. And I'm like, you, you can't say that. I mean, that's not, you can't, we can't stop people from coming in. Like you said, they could have had a party that had out of state. And, and, there was, and there was one. I mean, so I've had graduation parties for all my kids where my family has had to park and walk two blocks to my house. It's, it's, that's how it is in a subdivision. When my kids play softball in Griffith, we walk, parked in front of people's houses. We walked two, three blocks in the field. Same thing with Dyer. There's, their lower field, you park and you walk two, three blocks. We made this I mean, suggestion of 133rd in, in Osborne there because I thought the town still owned the property, but it turns out that somebody else owns that property now. Um, in 2020, I had a conversation um, um, with Mr. Warnoff. He was willing to open up his frontage property for their softball tournament and let people walk down at that time. And I was trying to facilitate that because we were having the problems with the tournaments back they then. They had a sign the straight north of them for parking. So by their small little field, right. their little girls, they have parking down that street. Um, so they have they have those signs up. But I mean, there was nobody parking from softball on our on Osborne 
and walking to the field. There was nobody from around south. Ralph didn't see legalization. No. He said it's a few people that like to complain. It's not every single weekend. Yeah. It, it really is. I mean, there's one house by the baseball field all summer, spring, summer, fall. He has cones in front of his house if he doesn't want anybody parking in front of his house, period. And he's just, whether it's massive baseball, whatever, he's, he's always done that. Unfortunately. And it's just. People can move them. I mean, it's a public road. You can't block a public road. And, and that's one, like, the two people who massively complain when they tried having my husband, you know, come in and talk. My husband told them, first of all, that's public property. Like, you can't tell people who can and can't park there. Um, and they didn't like being told that. They think it's theirs and only theirs and only their cars. I have four kids. When my all my kids are home, they don't park in front of my house. I have one parking spot in front of my house because I'm at a team. I mean, it is what it is. Chris, can we at least um, reach out to them, try and get their schedule so that they can give it to yeah. us, you know, who to reach out to, and then, you know, go ahead with a special event permit? Like if the Baseball and softball don't play the same weekend, do they? They, they have. I think yeah. they, they have, but I, I know they... It, the problem is, is when the presidents of each one of those leagues don't get along, which happens from time to time, they don't tell each other anything, right? right. But I think that and they're... And it's just the travel, the travel, the travel ball that show. those neighbors close to the softball don't like. It's the travel ball it's tournament. It's the tournaments, yeah. And... Ball Unfortunately for them, though, they don't understand that is a huge money grabber for those yeah. facilities. It is. It's, it it's, really it's is. big money to keep those facilities running to also alleviate the amount of money they charge each one of their players that are from our community. I used to park with people's front yard. We were from out of town. We didn't care. Rachel's so, resident needs to put parking friendly. Do not park here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand something, though, Julie. They, they can't block the road. It's a public road. Correct. They can't no, put they cones out there. I believe that. They had no recourse uh, because that you because know nothing was happening to the cars that were that don't that park where they're not supposed to block mailboxes and deliveries and. And as I as I told the, the, <laughs> and I won't say anything. I'm sorry. As I told him, I'm like, if you have those specific problems, you need to call 911 right away. Send us over there. We can take care of that problem right away, right? But, but if we drive by, and and there's no nothing being blocked, no driveways blocked, no um, anything being blocked, and then we go and we have ten calls, and we come back four hours later, and there's still nothing blocked. Between them four hours, someone might have blocked their mailbox, and we don't know about. It. Yeah, I said the same. I tell everyone the same thing. Call nine one one. No. And you know, be out there and. No. And they'll send. They will send an officer over there. They it may take them a little bit of time if we're on another call, but they'll they will come. It's supposed to be for everything. I said I would. I it it, it nine one used for everything. Now there's no so non emergency numbers. They're preaching the choir. I think they need to call everyone else because they're preaching the choir. <laughs> right. the, the problem is that they're asking you to do something that would literally infringe the benefits of everybody in that subdivision, right? Yeah. You put no parking in there. You limit the amount of cars that park there. That means all year round. That's not just during one tournament. That's all year round. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand that because. If it's if it's there and you have visitors, then what do you do? They're exactly. not a resident. They don't have a resident permit. Mm -hmm. um, but just you know, when you can on the weekends, a little more patrols. Um, I, I promise you, it's they on. Do. It is they on. Do. It, we do. We go by. I don't know how much more patrol you want because we we have limited number of officers. Yeah. And they're out there. They I, go I, there. I thought. I mean, I have some officers that down have down. kids that play, so yeah. they go there anyway. <laughs> They're, they're, they were down there, up and down there quite a few times over the weekend, but I mean, it wasn't, as, it wasn't that bad. I've no, seen worse. No one's trying to shut it down, but no one thought it would get this huge with softball and baseball and travel ball and, I did. you know. I knew it was going to Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Our I mean, kids play, man, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, nice, it's field, just, nice fields, it's, nice facilities. Yeah. And, 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 honestly, outdoor. and I will say this. Yeah. If you want to know the truth about it, why softball is so popular, 
because of how good Hanover did back when the Winglinger girls were there. Yep. And the and the people or the the players that they produced make an attraction, right? Uh, when 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 Hanover girls go downstate and win the state championship, that br draws people in. So then now all these young girls are like, we want to go play on those fields. Well, it does. It's a huge attraction. And, and also, I mean, Hanover's growth was 15% this last year. It's the last kids coming in to our Hanover High School. Yeah. 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 Ye
two million. Um, that's not, yeah, that's just May. Um, <coughs> other permits, uh, the total permit of 55. Uh, our inspectors are, yeah, we're to, yeah they're responsive. Again, it's going to be a topic of our conversation and the executive personnel. So, like, like here, that, that's for the month of May, that's for the month of April. Yeah. Yeah. So you add all them up, there's no total. You have to add them up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different over here. Yeah, you're right. We don't have a running total. That, that's usually done as a year-end report. And the Diamond Peak and the Old Top Homes, like the virtual Old Top Homes, are the state houses. And we got a lot of 3,200, uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot larger, more valuable houses being built this year than that's past. That's not fences, shed, pool, running. That's fine. Interesting. Okay. Uh, otherwise, our road projects are moving along. Very pay, pay requests. So you heard about the water line we discussed. <coughs> All kinds of fun, Chris. This is an old town. We're in the top ten fastest growing communities in the state. We're three of uh, out of out of those top ten, three of them are located here in Lake County, uh, St. John, Winfield, and us. So we are. Who, who we're St. John, <coughs> Winfield, and us. Uh, I don't remember the order. Sorry. We had a better sense of probably. Yeah, they shorted us ten people, so we got that back. We got them back. <laughs> Okay, uh, <coughs> Director of Operations. Uh, just one thing, um, we finally managed to get the museum separated on, uh, we got the lakefront lighting off of the electricity of the town over there uh, behind the stage, so um, that's been a task for about the last few <coughs> years, but we finally got their electric separated from the joint uh, okay. utility with the town, so um, Forward with. Great job on the orange away. That place is looking almost as good as your shirt. That orange posts on the stage. It looks great from the lake. You guys did a great job on that. It looks professional. Mary Jones started that with her paint donation. I had to get a couple butter collars, but we got a little bit. I like it. sitting around doing nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it did turn out nice. It's really Yeah, it really looks good from the lake. It's a big difference. So it looks super. Bob, I'll show you where new switches for the lights so you know. I know that's your thing. All right. We'll get you taken care of, buddy. It has moved. For uh, the lights, the boardwalk lights. Okay. Yeah. There's one of those big breakers, right? It's just a. That's warning. My voltage class, you need to break. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Police department. Uh, Council, you got our monthly report with our year-end reports. You can see we're averaging almost 34 calls of service per day. Um, we have road 106 uh, traffic citations, 358 warnings for the month of May. Uh, we had a total of 23 arrests, uh, 41 charges filed, 22 arrests, 314 felony for a total of 146 arrests. Uh, total charges for the uh, year, 261 charges. I, I did do some research, and um, since 2020, when I took over as chief, um, we're up 600 calls per, ser per, ser uh, per service in the first six months. So we've gone up 600. In, in 2020, we we're around 3,400. Right now, we're at 5,000 calls per service at, at the exact same time. That's it. Fire department. Uh, we're up as well, 21%. You see my reports right there. I got one other, two other things. Um, our open house, well, not open house, but our dedication of our of the tanker is going to be on the 29th. I sent it off to all of you. It's also public. Should be on Facebook as of after tonight, um, 6 p.m. But we're also doing a public safety meeting prior, uh, which is also a public meeting at the fire station. Um, you're doing the dedication at six or the meeting at six? The meeting will be at six. What did you say? The meeting right after, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 29th, Todd, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to use the F word here fireworks. Um, oh we are in a drought. So if 
fireworks. The state, Indiana State Fire Marshal's Office has sent us a notice about fireworks, and we may have to put a moratorium on blowing off fireworks offshore. How do we do or on, that? Uh, off the lake? How, how, how does the state law do that? It would have to be the state, right? It's a state law that the fire chief can de declare under drought conditions and with the backing of the town council and the attorney's draft that we can put a moratorium on blowing off fireworks um, due to weather conditions, unfavorable weather conditions. Now this is not pertaining to the Summerfest fireworks because they'll be done at the lake. Um, but how is any that inland to enforce this? I don't know how to enforce it. Is it possible? I don't know how to enforce it, but I do know one thing. That last time we had when we had a drought before we had a lot of fires. And it's from carelessness. And we have plenty of carelessness use of fireworks in this town. So by no means is we talking about stopping the fireworks show for I'm not worried about that show. That show is on the lake and obviously we don't have an issue, but these amateurs that are blowing stuff off and things are blowing over people's houses and they're blowing into open fields, you know, the temperature of them ashes catch fields and buildings on fire. Um, Over just had one not too long ago, built, burned a commercial building. People blowing off fireworks, caught the roof on fire. So we have to start looking at this. We are, the, the, the outlook doesn't look good between now and 4th of July. We're getting much rain at all. So I just want to give everybody a, a heads up that we may have to consider, you know, enforcing a, a moratorium on it. Now, we can also... Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, I mean, for, in the interest of public safety, we have to take a look at this and, and watch the, the drug conditions. So that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. We already have the building department report. Christopher Burke report. Public comments. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Damn. Yeah. 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 Um, I just wanted to let you know that we had worked with the last town manager about the ADA picnic tables. Two of them will arrive. We would prefer them to stay here at the grounds because of the use of the facility here. And there's more people that probably would use them than out the other parks. We also have two regular picnic tables that will be donated. We're working on more. The lumber for these four tables was donated by Tri Creek, and Summerfest paid for the labor. So those will be down here at the grounds. I did have a conversation with Dale this morning that, about the ABA arriving, and that we're going to put those. They'll be marked so people will know. You should be able to know by because they look different than other tables. So we're hoping to maybe get a couple more, but I just wanted to let you know that four are will be arriving for Summerfest. Well, what about what about the insurance for Summerfest? I've been hearing all kinds of comments about it. Found it on that. No. that that if you don't get insurance, we may not be able to have Summerfest. No, that's not true. Nobody's ever said Nobody said that. No. I, I, do you have insurance? I understand that the provider you had can't the provider provide that you them. gave us. Your provider. Your provider is not covering items that they covered in the past. Last so that year. put us in a position that we had to find a carrier. Okay. So we are doing the best we can to find a carrier. Because your provider does not accompany okay. just you don't have to provide a carrier. You right? just renewed you know you just renewed with them and they're not covering a lot of things that are normally covered before. What sorts of exploration have you done? Okay. Tracy so, if you could step up I'm going to let her take over because that's her. Thank you, Mary Jane. Thank you for the hand. So, to start, can you tell your name and address, please? Tracy Haskell, 13436 Osborne Street. Thank you. Last year was the first year because we've always been under you guys. Last year was the first year we had to go off on our own for a special event and pay for it. We paid $2,000. It was with your insurance company. They did a special event for us. So, we, of course, called them this year to have another one. Um, six months down, I mean, six weeks down the road, they called us and said the guy who did the underwriting last year is not doing it this year for festivals. So there's no way that they can do it. 
she reached out um, to many different brokers for insurance. She finally found one. They do not cover parades. They do not cover anything on water, which is our cardboard boat race. Even though we have pictures and videos of the race where little kids are in the water, they can see how shallow the water is. It's because the event is on water, they will not insure. Um, so I got involved. I work in insurance. I reached out to as many brokers I can, and they reached out to brokers that they can. We have one we're waiting to hear on. It's the cardboard boat race that's holding us up. Um, it will cost us over $8,000 for insurance for four days, which we have to pay to have it. It is right. what it is. Right. Um, we may, and this is what we don't want to do, we don't want to cancel the cardboard boat race. But if we can finally find somebody and all we can do is judge the boat then on land, then that's what we're going to have to do this year. But we're still waiting to hear. Because I have fathers who call me put, to put their kids' boats in the parade. The, the museum has a group together. I mean, people are putting their heart and souls into these boats. We want them to have this event. Right. So we are reaching out. I mean, I reach out to brokers. They're reaching out to other brokers. And other brokers. Have you talked to Tom Lump? Who's the, who's the, he's a Lake County Fair Board member. He also ran an insurance brokerage in Lowell for years. Text me. I also left Julia a message. And, and Lump, Lumpy has connections because he's always connected to Lake County Fair with the insurance providers. You so, didn't text me his information. Yes, I, I will reach out to him first thing tomorrow morning. And Tom I've, could help you. I've already, already um, also reached out to um, Julie from the museum because they have that steamboat, what insurance they use. Um, now one thing that I've questioned, and the farmer's market, because the list of stuff that we have that insurance does not cover, bouncy houses. We cannot have petting zoos. It's a huge list. We can't have any athletic sports, a whole bunch of stuff and all these different insurances. I've, I've read many different policies from different companies, you know, that this is the reason why we can't cover you. Farmer's Market, how do they do their insurance? Who do they have? She has this, I'm not sure who Have she you has. talked to Kelly? I have not. <clears throat> okay. I mean, our major, our major thing is the cardboard boat race. Right? Like, I can, I can have an insurance right now. It's gonna cost us a whole lot of money. I mean, we hate to pay out $8,000, $10,000 for a shirt. Is that for the rider for the boat race? It's for... The is, they'll do a rider for it's, half a day. It's, it's, it's liability insurance for the festival. So the beer garden, the stage, right. um, the car show, the parade, um, and of course, the carver boat race is what huh. is hanging us up. Because they do not want to insure anything on water, huh. which is just sad. We don't get it. I mean, in your insurance, three foot deep. <laughs> we, we, we submit videos of it so they can literally see the little kids in the water and how shallow it is. The sad thing is that the insurance covered us last year with absolutely no problem. And then they waited so long to tell us. So we've just, last two weeks have been just not stopped on the phone. Oh, without the cardboard boat race, it's going to cost us over it's probably eight thousand dollars. Without the cardboard boat race, that's what we're waiting here. Oh, how long is cancel? So so the cardboard boat race to the insurance company and let them go do what they want to stay all lake and they have all like private individuals. What what the <laughs> have straight up told me is the the underwriters straight up said because they know we had it in the past. Even if we say we're canceling it, because we've said we can't get it insured, we'll just cancel it. So like knowing that you had it, even if you say you're canceling it, I don't trust you, so we're not insuring. I don't know you. Right. And I'm like, you show up to it. Like we we're gonna have to announce it that we're gonna cancel it if we do. I'll get you in contact with some people. I, I appreciate. I mean, we just have a couple days. Yeah, there's yeah. some resources. And and it there. usually takes a couple weeks to get the writing done. So, I mean, it. Save your vote for next year. 
Yeah. So you can do. We're, we're still, we're, we would still do the judging because we have the trophies, we have all of that stuff, we have the shirts, we have everything. So, okay. and we're just trying to be fair. Litigation, ruining <laughs> country. Yep. What's happening? Insurance for the lawyers. Yeah. It's the biggest scam in the world. But yes, it is. I hate insurance with a passion. To me. Made all of the prison for the same stuff insurance companies do. But uh, I digress. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? No. Third call. Anybody in line? Thank you. Next town council public meeting will be Tuesday, July 5th at 7 p.m.